Take a look at this image. It's a list of countries from around the world arranged in order of the percentage of their constituents who accept the theory of crystallization and believe that snowflakes are formed by freezing and crystallization as opposed to being directly created by a snowflake-making god. Now, out of this list, every single country except for Turkey lies above the United States. That is to say that in the U.S., only 40% of the constituents believe that the theory of crystallization is responsible for the creation of snowflakes. The remainder of them are either unsure or believe that snowflakes are the direct result and were created in present form by a snowflake-making god. Now, why does this not offend people? Why are people not angry about this and demanding scientific and educational reform? It's absolutely mind-boggling. Well, truth of the matter is, this graph isn't about crystallization. It's about people accepting the theory of evolution in the public. And it should yield similar results. Evolution is just as important and saves far more lives. Now, you need to ask yourself again, I know that I've said this, but why the distinction? Why evolution? Why single it out? Why is it being treated completely differently? And that's a question that needs answered. To be honest, one of my subscribers sent me a link to a symposium on evolution from the University of Rockefeller, and, and the speaker mentioned this, and I thought I would share it with you guys. Um, I, I actually don't know who the subscriber was because the message quickly got buried in my inbox, but thank you again. The second thing that I wanted to do tonight was to put creationism in rational perspective. For example, the ancient Norse believed that thunder and lightning were caused by their god Thor being pulled in a chariot driven by goats, and that thunder and lightning were caused whenever he threw his hammer Mjolnir. Um, to contrast this, many Indian cultures also believed that the Earth was supported and sitting on the back of giant turtles. Now, creationists contend that man was made out of clay and that women were derived and, and came from, God's, from man's rib when he slept. Now, stop and think about that. Which one of those sounds absurd? The answer is all of them. So why is creationism given a special pass on this? If you were to go up to basically any educated person in the world and you were to tell them, okay, thunder and lightning being caused by God throwing his hammer, the world being supported on the back of a giant turtle, or women coming from man's rib, which of those three is not absurd? They couldn't give you an answer because they're all equally absurd. And so that's a very interesting distinction. Now, creationists could possibly answer, well, we know that our answer is true. Well. That doesn't make it true whatsoever, objectively. For example, there have been many, many more people who believed that the Earth did sit on the back of a giant turtle, or that Thor did throw his hammer to cause thunder and lightning, um, and, and any of the other creation myths, as opposed to just the Christian one. So, And they all believe that it was equally true. Um, so why is it given a special pass again? You believing something true doesn't make it so. The second thing they could argue is, well, we know how thunder and lightning are made. Well, we also know how humankind evolved or came to be. The answer is evolution. So again, that's an also equal or equally invalid option. And, and I think that that's something that you need to understand is that creationism is being given a special pass. And it's okay and it's, it's preposterous to think that lightning were to be caused by Thor or the earth sitting on the back of the giant turtle and you would ridicule anybody or not associate yourself with them if, if they told you that they believed that. Yet when somebody tells you and looks you in the eye that they honestly believe that women came from man's rib after God put them to sleep, then you, that, that's acceptable. And in fact, 40% of Americans plus believe that. And that's, again, absurd. The other thing that I wanted, or that I kind of noticed, was that about creationist logic, and as far as why creationism is appealing. On one hand, you need to understand human nature, and that's that human beings fear what they don't understand. Anything different, anything that they don't understand, it scares them, and they don't like it. So you have two options here in, in, modern, in the modern world, is that you can either A, study science, study evolution, learn about it for years, or you can forget all that, forget all the experiments, forget all the evidence, forget all the facts, forget all the learning, and just say, God did it. Now, what is easier? Like, admittedly, most people are lazy, and they don't want to understand, they don't want to take the time to learn things. So science, of course, is not exactly the best option. It's hard, it takes time, it takes understanding. It's much easier to say that, well, God did it, and throw your hands up, and then not have to worry about anything. Now, this does two things. The first thing that it does is it prevents you from having to learn anything, so it's easy, and by all means, most people will do it. The second thing that it does is it gives you, or lets you think that you understand it. And by understanding it, you're not as fearful. So that, that's something else to understand about just human tendency and why creationism can be so attractive, because it involves the least amount of effort, and it gives you the sense of an understanding. When you learn how to speak to a person's conscience and circumnavigate the intellect, the subject of evolution seems to disappear. 
Now, this is real good news for people like me. It means I don't have to become an expert in the fossil record. And it also means I don't have to learn words like Rhino Rondothacosaurus. The other amusing thing that happened was I was watching a documentary on Annie with my girlfriend about Jim Jones, who was uh, the leader of the People's Temple, that, that cult that they all drank the Kool-Aid and died. And they actually brought on a psychologist who was describing brainwashing and you know how to, how to gain control over people and get them to do what you want. And he said that there's a two-part um, system, that's, there are two steps that are absolutely necessary that, that, that's the most efficient way to, to brainwash someone and get control over them. And I wish I would have had the clips, but, um, or I wish I would have had the clip of the guy, but I don't. But the first thing that he says was that the biggest thing that you need to do, or the first step in brainwashing someone, is that you need to break them down and make them feel bad about themselves. Tony, would you consider yourself to be a good person? Yeah. Can I ask you a few questions to see if it's true? All right, then. Have you ever told a lie? Yeah. What does that make you? A liar. Have you ever stolen something? Never. You're not lying to me? No. So in your whole life, never stolen e anything even a bit small? No. Okay. Have you ever used God's name in vain? I said the G word, but not the J word. Okay, that's using God's name in vain, which is called blasphemy. Now listen to this one. Jesus said, whoever looks upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yeah, I'm a human being. Okay. I've been, I'm a teenager. Okay. Tony, by your own admission, you're a blasphemer, a liar, and an adulterer at heart. So if you stand before God on Judgment Day and he judges you by the Ten Commandments, do you think you'd be innocent or guilty? You know, by your standards, of course, you know, guilty. Would you, know. You go, would you go to heaven or hell on Judgment Day if God judges you by the Ten Commandments? Then probably, you know, hell. Now, the second thing that needs done after you've already broken them down is to bring them back up. Even though you're a liar, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart, God can make an exception for you because he sent Jesus to die on the cross. He took the punishment on the cross for your sins. And when the last thing that I wanted to do tonight was some basic housekeeping. Um, to begin with, many of you guys have messaged me, many of my subscribers, asking if they can distribute my videos. And by all means, feel free to do so. I would love it if you save them, post them on external sites, do whatever, I, I don't mind. I've actually kind of noticed lately that a lot of the, my um, videos aren't being linked to in external sites, or I don't have very many external site links. So if you could distribute them, please, I'd really appreciate it. The second thing is that many of you have rightfully so complained about the audio and, vid and um, video quality of many of my videos. And uh, again, rightfully so, it's awful. I've already bought one camera since I've started making videos, and I've gone through two mics, too. Um, both of which, they're, they're just horrible quality and the persistent hum continues. And I would love to buy new equipment, but the fact of the matter is I simply can't afford it right now. That being said, I've run the idea by a couple of my subscribers, all of whom supported it. And if you like what I do, and you would like the audio video quality of my videos to improve, then please send me $1 via PayPal to wagray at email.unc.edu. That's G-R-A-Y. And I'll include a link to the email address in the video description. Um, I would I would really appreciate it if you guys could do that so that I can get some new AV equipment, especially just just a new mic is one of the main things. And it would be fantastic if you all could help me out. And again, if you appreciate what I do, please support me. If on the other hand, the AV quality doesn't bother you, you think it's fine, or you simply can't afford it either, please don't feel obligated. It, it's, it's simply those that have the means, if you could, I'd really appreciate it. But please, again, don't feel obligated. Consider the equivalent of buying me a beer, as many of you guys have have mentioned. It, it's actually kind of funny how many people have said that. Um, so again, I'm very appreciative of everything you guys do, period. But again, thank you. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to touch on really quick was I watched a video the other night from a new guy who was actually pretty impressive. Um, his name is Andromeda's Wake, and he's only got two videos so far. Um, but what I saw was actually pretty good. It's a nice change also because he's not a biologist. He's a physicist, I believe. And um, his videos are mostly based on um, physics and debunking creationism and astronomy and things like that. So I'd highly recommend seeing that. And again, a, a traditional or, or usual rather shout out to all the, the big players, um, Thunderfoot, CDK007, Potolar54, and Aaron Raw. Actually, if you have time, check out Aaron Raw, and I'll include a link to his video as well in the channel description. Check out his Eighth Fundamental Falsehood of Creationism video. It, it's on mutations, and it, it discusses a number of beneficial mutations and how mutations works and things like that, as well as debunks the creationist video. And it, it's really a really good piece of work, and I love linking people to it. So I would highly recommend you guys check that out. Um, I think that's going to be it for tonight, guys. Thank you very much for your time. I've got a video on natural selection coming out tomorrow. So, again, thank you very much, and have a good night.